Hello and welcome to the Gallant Goblin. Do you consider yourself a creator? I think the nature of TTRPGs promotes creativity. You don't have to be a published writer to have created really great content for a game. As a game master, you may have homebrewed entire worlds. As a player, you may have developed new feats or subclasses to build that exact character you imagine in your head. We will not be discussing the recent Vive OGL controversy here, but if you've heard anything about it at all, you know that the TTRPG industry has strongly promoted not just folks inventing new content for their games, but sharing that content, making both free and paid supplements available for other people in the community to use or build upon. So maybe you have a really cool setting or adventure or mechanic that you've already invented, but you have no idea how to publish it. Or maybe you're aspiring to be a professional in the industry, either as a freelancer or to get hired by your dream company. How do you get started? Well, today we have a special guest who's uniquely positioned to help answer those questions. Cage is a good friend of ours who works at Drive Through RPG, which is now owned by Roll20, which is probably the biggest TTRPG marketplace online now. Popular community content sites like DMs Guild for D&D 5e, Pathfinder Infinite for Pathfinder 2e, Miskatonic Repository for Call of Cthulhu, and more are all powered by Drive Through RPG. And a lot of major publishers like Artel Sorian, Monty Cook, Magpie Games, and more also make some or all their books available for sale there. Our sponsor, Hitpoint Press, is also looking to highlight indie creators and creative new games with their Constellation Zine Kickstarter going on right now. Constellation, an RPG zine anthology, includes 12 brand new tabletop RPGs for you to play. You can get them either digitally or in a nice hardback edition. There's fun for all number of people. What really happened is a solo game, while Visa Visage is a two-player narrative combat game. Plus, other games that work for larger groups like more traditional tabletop games. Use our link in the eye in the corner or the video description down below to let Hitpoint Press know we sent you their way. The campaign ends on February 9th, 2023, so check it out before it's too late. That's Constellation, the RPG zine anthology from Hitpoint Press. And now let's welcome Cage. Hello, and thank you so much for joining us today, Cage. We are in the middle of Arctic Blast 2, Electric Heater Boogaloo, here in winter 2023. So how are you holding up in the Midwest? Uh, doing pretty well. It got a little chilly here this week, but uh, we've been doing some work on the house, getting some good insulation, so I've been trying to keep warm, you know? That, that, that's good. That's important. So... Of course, we've invited you here today because a lot of TTRPG players of all sorts of game systems uh, may have an interest in publishing their own content. And, you know, maybe they have some cool homebrew that they want to share with the world, or maybe they aspire to become professionals in the industry. And you are the holder of many titles, uh, <laughs> Twip streamer, TTRPG writer, you're a layout designer, community manager for Storytelling com uh, Collective, Storytelling Collective. Uh, community relations representative for Roll20 and specifically Drive Through RPG, the entity under um, that, formerly uh, One Bookshelf. Uh, you are also the mother of warlock patrons, protector of the Seven Kingdoms. I feel like I may be missing some additional titles here, actually. <laughs> so, with all the work that you do, um, kind of just wh wh where would you recommend? Uh, someone start if they are just kind of looking to um just kind of get in get their feet wet in this world yeah um well my number one recommendation would be the way that i got started which was through the storytelling collective the time it was mostly just uh the course known as the rpg writers workshop now known as the write your first adventure workshop uh, but storytelling collective has a whole bunch of different courses and writing challenges uh, that creators can take in order to learn how to write for ttrpgs as well as actually some other spaces too so um uh, that would be my best suggestion as far as like where to, to get started and learning how to write different things. Um, but another big part of that is finding a community. So even if those courses aren't for you, finding other people who are doing the type of work that you want to do and, and 
building and being a part of community can be really helpful um, because they can offer feedback towards what you're working on and um, and they can also just like they generally just like help with like the health of your project right so maybe they might end up being play testers or future collaborators um i the first one shot that i wrote um i did solo uh i hired on an editor but other than that i did all of the writing all the layout all the art sourcing and everything um but then the second one that i did i collaborated with a friend and it was really nice because i'm not an illustrator by any means but he was so we both did the writing on that i did the layout he did the art and we um brought in an editor to to take a look at it and sometimes just being able to um you know lean on your community and bring that stuff in and then um and then being able to uh to like work towards your strengths and, and finding people towards some of the challenges that you have can make writing a project a lot easier um so I, I think that that's one reason why write your first adventure workshop and some of the other storytelling collective workshops work out so well is because we do have a really great community of writers um, who are very motivating and understanding and they come from all different you know walks of life um so there's there's understanding in a lot of different ways um so uh that's um i think that that's like a really great way to get started learning how to write things um uh and uh we actually have some other really cool things that are coming up um uh for instance one of the things that we're starting up is called bookworms it's going to be like a book club for ttrpg systems um so that'll uh it'll be like a monthly thing that uh you can basically like subscribe to and um, we're working with some different publishers to to um to help highlight some different systems that people can learn um and then we'll like do like discussions and stuff based on those systems so let's also look another really great way if if you're like i don't know what system to write for or i'm interested in expanding what systems i write for and like opening up your portfolio that way i think that'll be a really cool um project so um you can find out i think more info on that on our website um but if you already know how to write like an adventure maybe you have taken the write your first adventure workshop already um there's some other courses in there too like the D dungeon design essentials courses like help you learn about like really specific things within adventure writing so like how to make um treasures that are um like realist that i don't know if realistic is the right word but like they make sense you know and are are not just like you find a pot of gold you know or whatever <laughs> like they you know make them make sense or um creating like special moments and stuff like that so there's lots of really great courses within there um and then when you have that kind of stuff uh in order to get it out to people drive through rpg is a great uh, way for for folks to do that and um and there's kind of a few different avenues that you can take within that right so um if you're looking to publish your own stuff maybe it's your own system or you're using like an open license of some sort uh for an existing system but it's like your own personal setting drive through rpg is is generally where folks will go for that if you're using a currently existing system and you want to use some more of the intellectual property of a publisher that, um, some of them have community content programs within um, that space. So um, some examples folks might be familiar with would be like the DM skill for writing for D&D 5e or uh, Pathfinder Infinite for writing within uh, uh, Paizo's Pathfinder community or like Chaosium's Miskatonic repository for writing Call of Cthulhu uh, type of, of scenarios. Um, so you can uh, utilize more of their like setting or lore um, within those types of things and then um, also of course you can use the rule 20 marketplace to create uh, virtual tabletop conversions of your work so whether that's um, creating modules and add-ons for your one shots or um, uh, uh, in the past that's been mostly just opened up to stuff that you could publish on drive through rpg because a lot of the community content programs have um like exclusivity agreements that don't let you sell that stuff on other uh marketplaces however um uh we are working with some of those different areas and uh currently for dm's guild and pathfinder infinite people can start creating those conversions they'll be sold on dm's guild and pathfinder infinite and then when people buy them um they'd put in their email address for the rule 20 marketplace and they'll show up in their uh in their purchases basically on roll 20 so that 
it hasn't been set live yet, but we do have a lot of creators who are working in the background right now, converting some of their most popular products. And um, I believe the release for that will be at the end of February. Uh, so um, something for folks to look out for if, if you're interested in either converting your stuff or, or finding some more Roll20 conversions of some of your favorite community content program pieces. Yeah, that's amazing. That's, um, yeah, I know that, that a lot of folks just kind of, that's just extra value of being able to get the content itself, but then being able to import a lot of assets into, into VTTs has, has always been very important. Um, but drive to RPG also is not limited to, to digital content, right? Like there's, what are some of the kind of the other tools that it will, would provide for publishers in terms of both, um, providing their content in different mediums and getting their content found by by customers. Yeah, yeah. So on Drive Through RPG, there's um, you can, there's a lot of different types of files that you can upload. So we have some folks who their entire catalog is stock art, or their entire catalog is STL files for printing uh, miniatures. Um, uh, you can also instead of just digital PDFs, create print on demand uh, uh, books for uh, your different titles. Um, and some of the community content programs let you do that too. Uh, those are a little bit more limited because uh, there is quite a bit of work on the publisher's end for that. So not all of our community content programs allow for that. Um, and they may limit them in different ways as well by saying that you have to have like so many copies sold or something like that in order to have that available to you. But um, print on demand is a great way to, to also um, expand your catalog essentially. Um, and uh our team is always willing to to help you uh find we have a bunch of different like help articles out there about how to set up your product for print on demand um and you can always email your rep uh for drive through rpg with the the cover and interior pdf files before you upload them and we can have our print production team take a look at them too um and just make sure that you're up to specs so that way when you order your proof you aren't surprised <laughs> because your file wasn't compliant or something like that um so yeah there's a lot of different things uh people can also upload audio files so um some people just have like soundtracks that you could download and put into like your vtt or something like that um so there's a, a lot of different things uh related to those as well um and we also do a lot of support for people with crowdfunding campaigns so um some of the, the kind of tools that we have for that is for fulfillment you can send out complimentary copies of like your stuff so whether it's a pdf or print on demand basically you just download your um your uh csv file from your crowdfunding uh uh, crowdfunder of choice and um, you just upload that into like a group is what we call them on drive through RPG and then as long as you have all of their like their name and their shipping information if it's uh, print on demand you just like click some buttons and it will send that out to people and you can choose whether um, the customer pays printing and shipping or whether the publisher does so that depends on whether you obviously collected that um, on the crowdfunder or not um, and uh, yeah, so that, that's kind of a cool tool as well. Um, we have some other promotional tools. Um, there's a, it's basically like an on-site currency called Publisher Points. And you gain those uh, monthly as well as like based on like your sales. Um, there's some more information on that within our help articles too. And you can use Publisher Points to um, uh, put some banners on the drive through RPG page or to make like a featured uh, product description. Um, and one of the ways that a lot of people use them too is for a deal of the day. Um, if you ever go to drive through RPG, you'll see on the very top right corner, a deal of the day, people will um, tend to, whenever they put a product in there, they'll like steeply discount uh, that product. And, um, and because it's on the front page and it's pretty front and center and people know to look for it, um, people tend to get a lot of sales out of that. And it's, um, it's sort of an interesting system in that it's like, like a fully like lottery based system there's not like a queue or like a timeline like it can be sometimes months before yours comes up or um or it can also be uh like shorter time period than that so uh but it's up for a whole day and and people get a lot of sales through something like that so that you can use promotion points for that you can also actually with drive through rpg email all of your current customers so if somebody has bought one of your products before you can use that then to email them and say hey you like this product based on this maybe rpg line we're 
I'm putting out a new product and it's something that you might enjoy. And one of the things that's nice about that is what we um, encourage people to do that have crowdfunding campaigns is to put up like a like a primer or like a quick start of whatever their product is um, and put it up for like free or pay what you want and then link that into your crowdfunding campaign and then anytime that somebody goes in and purchases that for free uh, they become one of your customers. And normally within our uh, the tools for emailing to customers, you can't put offsite links in there, but you can email your rep and uh, up to twice per campaign, we'll send out an email uh, to your customer base uh, with whatever copy that you want with the with your Kickstarter or your crowdfunder or whatever your crowdfunding campaign uh, link in there. And then, um, uh, you can either have it limited to the people who bought maybe that primer or quick start, quick start uh, piece or all of your customers. And then um, they can get like notified when it goes live. And then again, like maybe like a week before it ends, we can send out another email on your behalf as well. Wow. Yeah. I, I had no idea about, th about that actually. So yeah, that's excellent. So if um, talking about the, the publisher rep, I mean, I, I know you mentioned kind of the FAQs and, and, and the rep, so like, yeah, folks wanting to get started on drive through, like, do they get a, a rep immediately as soon as they, they kind of create an account? Or yeah. So, um, in order to sign up to be a publisher on drive through RPG, you have to have like a regular customer account. So you can just create an account on drive through RPG. And then at the very bottom of every drive through RPG page, there's going to be a link that says how to sell on drive through RPG.com. You click that and it'll walk you through the steps of creating a public publisher account. So basically when you do that, it's going to associate your email address, your customer email address with a publisher account. And so, um, each customer address can only be associated with one publisher account, but one publisher account can have multiple email addresses. So if like you and a buddy are going in and creating a publisher account together, you can create one publisher account and sign both of those email addresses to it. And then both of you have access to all the tools and the, the publisher funds and earnings and things like that. So you create that and then um, you'll get some emails with some more information. That's how you can find our publisher knowledge base with all of our FAQs and things like that. Um, and um, your rep will then automatically be myself and my colleague Adam um, and uh, if you ever have any questions that you can email us on your publisher hub there will be that link with our email address in there um, and and then you can reach out to us we do have a couple of other folks who work on our team so our publisher relations team is um, larger than just the two of us um, it's still relatively small but like we have one person who works specifically with like the DMs guild and does like our title approvals um, we have another person who works with like the the majority of the rest of our community content programs, as well as some of our top publishers. Um, so there's a few of us that have our hands in different things, but for most, for the most part, if you're a new publisher on drive through RPG, um, you'll be coming to myself and, and my coworker. Um, we also have another uh, nice tool too, is we have a, a drive through RPG discord server, which is actually open to anyone in any of our community content programs. Um, if you're a drive through RPG publisher, and if you're a roll 20 seller, you can, um, you can come and join our discord server, um, get help from our team, as well as, um, a lot of our publishers are really fantastic and are able to help answer questions as well. Cause, um, we're only there during like normal business hours. So if you have a question over the weekend, sometimes the publisher will come in and they'll be like, oh, I know the answer to this and we'll answer that for you too. So it's a really great community. Yeah, I, I'm in that Discord. I love it. And it's also a great place to get just the announcements of all the latest news that as things get updated, as new features come out and things like that. Um, but uh, in addition to your to your work with, at, with Drive Through RPG, you are also a creator yourself. and one project that you currently have going right now um, is a crowdfunding campaign on crowdfunder.com, the different kind of new and upcoming crowdfunding uh, site that is running a tabletop nonstop event uh, through the end of February that is really allowing them to highlight various tabletop and tabletop associated projects. And you have one there called Unexplored Horde. Um, so what is this campaign about? Yeah, so Unexplored Horde is, um, if it funds, it'll be a TTRPG and hobby interview show. So uh, basically, it'll be a monthly show where I sit down with people who are within the TTRPG industry, whether they're creators or like personalities in like actual play streams or podcasts. Um, and uh, they're 
they come from a variety of different areas within the industry. And I'm going to sit down and I'm going to ask them about their non TTRPG hobbies. Um, so <laughs> yeah, so if it funds, we're looking for uh, $4,500 by the end of February. Um, that'll guarantee four episodes. So I'll be running that from March until is that July? <laughs> I think that's July. So the the first four will be locked in if we reach that. And then every $500 after that will open up a new guest all the way until December. Um, so we could have the potential of having six different guests on the show. Um, and so, yeah, so I'll be asking them um, a little bit about their TTRPG experience. Just so if folks aren't familiar with who they are, they can kind of get an idea of, of how they fit into the industry. But mostly I want to ask them about the things that they do when they're not thinking about TTRPGs. So, um, uh, for gosh there's been some like really fun things um i just i've been um posting some stuff on twitter and uh i just posted about anthony who's our september stretch goal and um if we fund far enough to get anthony joyce rivera on the show i know he really wants to talk about warhammer 40k and how to build how to create a perfect old-fashioned cocktail so uh i'm really excited for for that and yeah we've got um folks who do comics we've got folks who are musicians um we've got people who are like dice makers and um uh gosh so many different areas that i feel like people are in and so uh, i do hope we fun because i'm i think people will kind of enjoy that and um, I think one nice thing about it too is it's, uh, I think it's promoting that it's healthy to have hobbies outside of, you know, the hustle <laughs> of the TTRPG industry. Um, and, uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I'm really excited about, about that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, they, um, you have the list of all of the main, the, the guests for the main goal and then all the stretch goals on your site there's some there's some big names on there i was like oh my gosh this is this would be just so exciting just to hear them i know like uh, we always joke like you know like the best movies are the movies where you would be willing to just kind of watch like some of the the actors chat like over coffee and i think this is kind of exactly what that is where you get to see these creators and they have all these great ideas right a lot of these are informed by their hobbies outside of of their work mm -hmm. um and and you just get to, to hear them talk about what interests them and that i think that's fantastic um what are some of the uh for folks who, who do want to back this uh in addition to the show what are some other rewards that, that they can get yeah so if we fund this the the actual show will be free for anybody to watch it'll be posted on my twitch channel or that's how we'll be streaming is on my twitch channel i'll be posting the vods up on youtube and then um i'll be having them edited down for a podcast format so like the actual product of this this crowdfunding campaign is going to be free and available to anybody. Um, but if you want to help make this happen, there are some different rewards you can get. I have six different loot tiers that you can pick up. Um, the, the lowest one is a suggested $10, um, but you can, um, you can contribute as low as $5 on that. And it essentially just um, gets your name in the rolling credits for the live stream. Um, and then that goes all the way up to $200, which will help you get your logo on all the streams. Um, there'll be, you can do like an ad, uh, a read, an ad read during the streams, which will also be then on the podcast as well. Um, you'll be able to ask like a generic question for the guest. Um, you'll get some of our physical rewards, which is, um, uh, a, an enamel pin and die cut sticker of the unexplored horde logo, as well as a sticker sheet that will feature the four, um, hobby dragons, uh, that I commission. Um, which is actually the hobby dragons are probably one of my favorite rewards. They're an add on and you can get, uh, uh, art prints of them and, uh, they're $30 per print. And if you already have something with like a shipping cost, um, that's the same value or more then it's only a dollar to add on each print. Um, and, uh, I commissioned cartoonist Jen Vaughn to create them and they are really adorable. Um, there's this black dragon that's dancing, a green dragon that's gardening, a white dragon that's knitting, and then a blue dragon that's like painting. So I'm really excited for those. Um, but yeah, so that's, um, 
uh the loot tiers in between there are uh just different variations of that so i um one i think you get like the pin in the in the die cut sticker and then the next one um you get uh like the sticker she added into that and there's also like the the basically the $200 one, but like a step down where I think it's, hold on, let me look at it. Cause I think it's yeah, $75. Um, but you just get like your logo on one stream, but then you also still get like all the physical rewards and stuff. So if you're not able to do the $200 one, but you still want to like have your organization like add or like, or like logo on the stream, that would be a good option for you. Yeah, and those yeah, those dragons are adorable. I want like stat blocks and minis of them too, but I, that, that's not. <laughs> but I was just like, yeah, you know, if, if, maybe next steps. <laughs> what what inspired you to 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 try to to do this interview show? Yeah, so uh, I've listened to a lot of different podcasts and like interviews of TTRPG like industry leaders and stuff. And I feel like a lot of like the same questions are asked of them. And like, there's definitely a place and these questions have their merit, but oftentimes it's just like, what projects have you been working on? Uh, you know, you worked on X project. What was that like? Uh, how did you get started? You know, that kind of stuff or like, what are your best tips for somebody who wants to get started? And I think all of those types of questions are they definitely have their place and they're really important because that's the kind of stuff I listened to when I was also getting started. But I always want to learn a little more. You were talking about that earlier, how like, you know, like you just want to like know what the coffee chat would look like, you know, with these people. And so um, that's kind of what inspired this is like, I'm like, what if we dug a little deeper and got to know these people on like a little bit like more of a deeper level than just, you know, what they produce. Um, and so yeah that's um that's kind of what in, inspired the show is just being able to ask people some of those questions that like don't normally come up there's been so many times that i've been on like twitter or wherever and people will like mention some like random fact about themselves and you're just like i had no idea that you were into roller derby or you were a professional opera singer or uh like i don't know like there's all sorts of different things like that where it's just like i don't know that I would have guessed that about you and please tell me more because that sounds so interesting. Yeah. When you first mentioned the show to me, I was like, yeah, this is, this is different. Like, I don't think I've ever heard of anyone kind of following up on these topics. And so that's super cool. Um, we're gonna, gonna flip the script on you and ask what, what some of your hobbies are then. And you know, where else can people find you if they want to follow your work? Oh boy, what are things that I do when I have free time? Uh, you got me there. Uh, no, uh, let's see. Um, well, my partner and I really enjoy traveling. Um, we are big fans of the national park system here in the United States. So um, we like to go and do um, not even necessarily like the big parks. Like we've done like Yosemite and we've driven through like the Rockies and stuff like that, or um, Yellowstone and driven through the Rockies and stuff. Mm -hmm. But um, we also go to like the national historic sites and we learn a lot about like the area around us. Um, when I lived out in Pennsylvania, we took like an extended Thanksgiving break and we went down to the capital region and we looked at all the monuments and went to all of like the museums that were part of the national park system down there. We did like the entire capital region in like five days, which was a lot of walking. I think we we're averaging like 23,000 steps a day. We were so tired. Um, but yeah, we really enjoy doing that kind of stuff. Um, I have also, um, have been cross stitching for years, mostly on and off. Um, but I've done some kind of nerdy things. I cross stitched like the D20 Dames logo and did an embroidery of like the Venture Maidens logo at one point. Um, by probably my biggest piece was for Christmas, gosh, it's probably been like 10 years now. I cross stitched a, a pretty sizable corporate Mundo for my brother. If you're familiar with League of Legends, there's a character on there called Dr. Mundo and there's a skin where he's like corporate and has like a tie and a briefcase. And um, yeah, I, I cross stitched that for him based on an image that I found. And uh, yeah, so that was a, that one took me a really long time, but probably one of the ones that I'm most proud of. 
Um, and I'm also really big into video games. I think I spend a lot of my free time playing video games. Um, as you mentioned earlier, uh, I'm a streamer, so um, I that's definitely I I probably spend a lot of time playing video games and springing that uh, streaming them. I've been doing that for longer than I've been in the TTRPG industry. Um, and so currently I'm working my way through uh, the Dragon Age games. I'm on Inquisition now, so I'm very excited for the Dreadwolf release. Um, I'm also currently working my way through Breath of the Wild. I've started that game like five different times, and I think I'm finally making some good progress on it. I think I saw somebody tweet the other day that it's like 100 days until the next one comes out. So I guess my time is ticking as to how much more time I have to collect all the Korok seeds and defeat Ganon. Um, and I'm also playing through Borderlands 3 with an old friend of mine. Uh, back when I lived in PA, we couch co-op through Borderlands 2. So this has been like a fun way to like reconnect. We've been streaming Borderlands 3 together most Sunday nights. So that's been really fun too. Um, but I also like to make room for like multiplayer games with my community. So like, uh, what is today? Last night? Two nights ago, we played some Overwatch 2 together. I've also played like Fall Guys and Fortnite and For the King and all sorts of different multiplayer games with folks within my community. So um, that's been really fun too. Yeah, I remember when you were doing your playthroughs of Hades and I was like, this is a game that I have heard so much about, but I could never play myself. I do not have that sort of reaction time. as so I got to kind of live vicariously and, 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 and experience the story through you. And that was, that was, so fun <laughs> yeah that's um, such a good game occasionally i'll still stream like a run to like my discord server or something like that because i feel like that's like when those games where it's like it almost never ends there's always like something else to get um unless if you've like truly truly like 100 percented everything um but the story in that is so much fun and i enjoy sharing that with people too um yeah 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 yeah, so I mean, with so many projects uh, coming up in 2023, and like all the changes that have been going through the industry, which we don't have to get into here, um, <laughs> what are you most excited about for this year? Yeah, well, obviously, if this crowdfunding campaign that I've started funds, uh, I'll be doing some really cool interviews throughout the year. Uh, with work, I'll also be attending a variety of different conventions. So I'm excited to meet up with um, some other creators through that and be able to chat about some of the things they have coming up. Um, I've also got a 5e project um, that was a big collaborative project that will be coming out probably in the next month or two. Um, I'm trying to make it a, a POD version as well. So that'll take a little longer because we have to like order the proof and get all of that squared away before I can activate them. Um, and then I have like a DM skilled product that I have been slowly chipping away at for like a year. I'm sure it still won't get published this year, but one, one day that will be completed. <laughs> And people will be able to get that too. Um, so, so yeah, I'm always, I'm always got something on, on the, on the side table that I'm working on. And, uh, but yeah, I'm also just really excited for some of the other projects I've seen folks post about too. Yeah. So for the, um, for unexplored horde, uh, you can find that at crowdfunder.com slash unexplored horde. Uh, crowdfunder is without the, the E. So it's C-R-O-W-D-F-U-N. DR, or as um, Theo likes to call it, Crow Defund Doctor. Um, <laughs> and uh, where else can people find you? Yeah. Um, so I have like a mailing list, a community discord server, a Patreon. I'm on Twitch all the time. Um, and you can find all of that information plus my social media handles on my website, uh, ragecagerugger.com, which is R-A-G-E-K-A-G-E-R-U-G-G-E-R.com. <laughs> all right. And yeah, we'll, we'll try to throw the information up on the screen too. So people don't, just, <laughs> uh, but that, yeah, that's fantastic. Um, yeah, thank you so much for your time. Thank you for kind of walking us through how to, to get started with, with publishing the TRPGs and, and all the just the cool stories that you have from your experiences here. Uh, is there anything else that that you wanted to, to, to mention that we didn't get to cover here? Man, I feel like we covered everything, but I just really appreciate y'all having me on and giving me a chance to talk about like 
a variety of different things that I do. <laughs> um, so hopefully folks find it helpful. And um, I, I hope that people find um, Unexplored Horde an interesting idea and, and help make it make it happen. So that was a crash course overview of a lot of the publication options that drive through RPG offers from digital products like PDFs, 3D printable mini STL files, and commercially usable art to print on demand products like small booklets, hardcovers, cards. They provide an array of promotional tools like front page promotions, site-wide discounts, affiliate links, and royalty sharing for projects with multiple creators. So what other questions do you have about getting started as a creator or publishing your work? Leave them in the comments below and I'll answer them as best I can. If we get enough questions that I can't answer, we can always bring back Cage or another expert here, depending on the subjects you wanna to hear to provide more information. Thank you for watching today. Don't forget to check out Hitpoint Press's Constellation Zine Anthology Kickstarter at the link in the pinned comment and Cage's campaign for Unexplored Horde at crowdfunder.com slash unexplored horde. If this video was helpful to you, please consider clicking that like button and subscribe buttons. You can chat with us on our Discord server, also linked in the pinned comment below, or follow us for the latest news on Facebook and Instagram. For now though, stay safe, have fun, Love each other, and I'll see you next time at the Gallant Goblin. Goblin.